if I told you that orbiting the sun among the Earth, Venus, Mars, and the other planets was a tiny teapot, a tiny teapot orbiting sun with the planets, what would you say? Well, the philosopher Bertrand Russell asked this question to illustrate the concept of burden of proof. So Russell's teapot goes something like, if someone claimed that there was a small teapot orbiting the sun somewhere between Earth and Mars. Now, you can't see it because it's tiny. Even the strongest telescopes in existence can't spot this teapot. So there's no evidence to support the existence of said teapot. It would be irrational for others to believe it. There's no evidence for the claim. And additionally, because the teapot is microscopic and can't be detected by even the strongest telescopes in existence today, there's not only no way to prove the existence of the teapot, but there's also no way to disprove the existence of the teapot. However, burden of proof lies with the person making the claim. So if I'm claiming the existence of the teapot and I'm not providing evidence, Bertrand Russell says we can dismiss the claim because it cannot be proven. Another example of this is from astronomer Carl Sagan, who in his 1995 book, The Demon Haunted World, offered a similar non-disprovable analogy called the dragon in the garage. So the story goes, if Carl Sagan claimed that there was a dragon in his garage, you would wish to verify it for yourself. But if the dragon was impossible to detect, quote, now what's the difference between an invisible incorporeal floating dragon who spits heatless fire and no dragon at all? If there's no way to disprove my contention, no conceivable experiment that would count against it, what does it mean to say that my dragon exists? So we're talking about generally here, the idea of the burden of proof, the burden of proof lying with party making claim or assertion. This is from a site called Logically Fallacious. So the description of shifting of the burden of proof, making a claim that needs justification, then demanding that the opponent justifies the opposite of the claim. The burden of proof is a legal and philosophical concept with differences in each domain. In everyday debate, the burden of proof typically lies with the person making the claim, but it can also lie with the person denying a well-established fact or theory. Like other non-black and white issues, there are instances where this is clearly fallacious and those which are not as clear. So the logical form, person one is claiming Y, which requires justification. Person one demands that person two justify the opposite of Y. Person two refuses or is unable to comply. Therefore, person one claims this proves that Y is true. So here's an example. Jack says, I have tiny invisible unicorns living in my anus. Nick says, how do you figure? Jack says, can you prove that I don't? Nick says, no. And Jack says, well, then I do. Jack made a claim that requires justification. Nick asked for the evidence, but Jack shifted the burden of proof to Nick. When Nick was unable to refute Jack's unfalsifiable claim, Jack claimed victory. So why am I talking about this? Well. Recently, we saw on Twitter this user, InvestorTurf, receive a communication from Citadel's legal team requesting that they remove an article that they published. The, they say the article in question is based on publicly available information and allegations that we did not create ourselves. So I'm not going to read through this whole letter, but we can see that Citadel or the legal counsel representing Citadel uh, claims that InvestorTurf currently hosts multiple posts that contain false and defamatory statements about Citadel Securities. Most recently, you published a blog post titled, quote, ex-Citadel engineer reveals rigged trading game of Citadel Securities. This post repeatedly claims that Citadel Securities engages in, quote, manipulative practices to, quote, create artificial liquidity or, quote, create fake liquidity. These statements are not only false, but defamatory. That the blog post purports to report on a LinkedIn post by Nick McConlog is irrelevant as you are equally liable for republishing these falsehoods. Other posts on Investor Turf reveal a pattern of repeated malicious and defamatory statements, including the facially absurd accusations that Citadel Securities has engaged in fraud, accounting tricks, and political bribes, and that Citadel Securities' accounting books are completely fraudulent. Collectively, these posts reveal a transparent intent to disseminate falsehoods about Citadel Securities and damage the company's reputation. This is clear evidence of actual malice. So I, I put the link to all of the stuff I'm looking at in the description of this video. This is uh, kind of a serious thing. Investor Turf runs a blog. They have a blog and they posted 
republished defamatory statements. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but I know enough to know that if a statement is defamatory and it's repeated by someone else, it doesn't matter where the statement originated, repeating a defamatory statement is defamation. So this is a widely known tenet of court law regarding defamation. So this letter was received by Investor Turf on March 13th, last Monday. They posted it to Twitter last Monday, which I'm not quite sure why they would post this to Twitter, but um, anyway, but they did respond um, with some garbage uh, as you know we can expect. But today we saw quite possibly the most ignorant response to this that one could offer. And we'll look at that right now. So this is from today, March 20th, from Investor Turf. If Citadel believes that our claims are false, we demand that they show evidence proving that our claims are untrue. We know that they have seen our tweets because they tried to silence us with a cease and desist. If Citadel fails to release a statement or provide any evidence, their silence will be taken as an admission of guilt as they are not capable of providing any proof to counter our claims. And this is a clear attempt to shift the burden of proof from investor turf who made claims repeated claims that were unsubstantiated evidence did not exist to support those claims yet the claims were made citadel took exception to that and said hey you can't say this stuff they're not only false statements they're defamatory statements you are trying to harm us by alleging these things without evidence okay investor turf responds and says well if Citadel says that what we say is false, then they need to prove that it's false. And that's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. Russell's teapot is an analogy to explain this concept, the actual concept being shifting of the burden of proof. So again, this is the level of logic that is employed by the apes. This is the level of logic that is employed by the AMC grifters. It's really a lack of logic. It's every formal and informal logical fallacy in the book, employing every cognitive bias that exists. And quite frankly, this really is a stupid move because the legal basis for this is clear. In fact, Citadel actually refers to the restatement of torts uh, that states the rule that, quote, one who repeats or otherwise republishes defamatory matter is subject to liability as if he had originally published it. So you can't repeat or republish a defamatory statement because then you would be subject to liability as if you had originally published it. So this is clear. This is a clear principle in the law. So this really is a dumb move. I don't see how this could end well for this person. Now, also another interesting thing in here is that the letter says not for publication or attribution. It appears that it has been published. So that's also not a good move. I don't know how this is going to turn out, uh, but but according to this letter, Citadel Securities will take any and all legal actions necessary to hold accountable all individuals and entities that participate in this plainly tortious conduct. So I hope that they have a good lawyer. Something tells me they don't, because if they did have representation, I can't imagine that their attorney would advise them not only to publish the letter on Twitter, which is reckless in and of itself, but also to come out with a statement like this, which shows a critical lack of understanding of the basic elements of crafting an argument. I don't know who this person is. I don't know their background at all, uh, but this does not reflect well on them, does not reflect well on their blog, and it doesn't reflect well on the retail investors, the apes, if you will, uh, who have been repeating these same claims for uh, seemingly years at this point. So remember, if somebody tells you that there is a teapot microscopic in size orbiting the sun between the Earth and Mars, yet they can't prove its existence. All the technology in the world can't prove its existence. And yet the person making the claim demands that you disprove the existence of the teapot. They've already lost the argument. And by the way, this same logical fallacy permeates the AMC MOAS theory, the most glaring example being the notion of synthetic shares. They can't be proven, but they believe in them. Now you tell me, is that a strong argument or have the apes already lost the argument and they don't even realize it? Always look for the evidence. Keep it evidence-based and remember Carl Sagan's words, extraordinary claims require extraordinary 
improve. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share it with someone if you found it to be interesting or helpful. And we'll see you in the next video.